couple of things real quick I want to review um, from the first couple of Sundays. Here's the thing I said to you the first Sunday of the month to walk you through where we are. And then we're going to jump into the message tonight. First Sunday of the year, we said to you to be su su successful. Can't talk this morning. In 2018, we must follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Come on, say this. Say, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Y'all don't sound excited. So say, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Good. And the second thing I, I share with you is that you cannot enter the year walking in the flesh. There must be a continual walk in the Holy Spirit. And we saw that in the book of Joshua chapter 3. The third thing was you must maintain a posture of reverence and continual worship to God. And I'll pick up a little bit on that today. God wanted to be revered and God wanted to be worshipped. But some of the most important things to kind of set the tone for what we're going to be doing this morning is that to be successful in 2018, we must look to God for guidance and direction because we are walking in uncharted territory. That is important, okay? None of us, inclusive of myself, have seen 2018 before. None of us have seen tomorrow before. We haven't been there. Um, none of us have seen the future before. So we're going into uncharted territory, so it calls Look into God for guidance and direction. And then finally, um, what we saw in 2018 is that it begins with a, a time of consecration. You must, uh, we must consecrate ourselves in preparation for the move of God. God wants us pure. God wants us holy. He wants us sep sep set apart. He wants us consecrated for what he wants done. So because we're going into some uncharted places, we must prepare ourselves for the move of God. So I want to pick up that same theme in the book of Joshua to walk through that. And as we kind of go through it, there's a couple of things I want to deal with as it relates to this next phase of move with God. Is that I want to talk this morning about knowing God. And last Sunday, for those that came to first service, we just gave a quick overview Wednesday, we started to hash this out and flesh it out a little bit. So I'll pick up there and walk through to give you some foundation. Here's what I want you to hear for the next at least three weeks here or more at Restoration Christian Fellowship. We come to know God by experience as we obey him and he accomplishes his work through us. Let me say it again. We come to know God by experience as we obey him and he accomplishes his work through us. I need everybody to repeat that after me. And if I don't get far in a message, I'm not worried about it. I want you to get this. Come on, say, we come to know God by experience. We come to know God by experience. As we obey him. As we obey him. And, he and he accomplishes his work through us. One more time. Say, we come to know God by experience. As we obey him. And he accomplishes his work through us. Now, let me say this, and it may sound like I'm, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse, but there's a difference between knowing God, I mean, knowing about God and knowing God, all right? A lot of us have heard about him, and we've mistakenly translated what we've heard about him into knowledge of him. Two different things, okay? And I want us to walk through this. Here's what uh, Arthur J.I. Packer um, very, very good author. If you get a chance to read this or grab this book reading, it's a book, Knowing God by J.F. Packer. Here's what he says. How can we turn our knowledge about God into knowledge of God? The rule for doing this is simply but demanding. It is that we turn and lock into this statement each truth that we learn about God into matter for meditation before God leading to prayer and praise to God. Each truth, look at the bottom sentence, the bottom two sentence, each truth that we learn about God, we have to turn that into a matter for meditation before God, leading to prayer and leading to praise, okay? So here's the thing. We need to shift from knowing about him to knowing him, okay? Come on, say amen. Yeah, because you can be in church a really, really long time, and all your experience in church has done is it's taught us about him, but until you experience him, you don't really know him. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So we're going to walk through that and talk about knowing God. So as we look at this story that's in front of us, um, let me say this by way of introduction. The Israelites now 
were about to enter their Canaan, they had the one remaining obstacle or barrier that stood in their way, and that was this issue of the River Jordan or the Jordan River. And they had to cross the river so they could really make it to their place of Canaan. Now, if they don't deal with the Jordan, they won't reap the benefits of Canaan, right? Now, here's what I want you to, 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 to hear me say this morning as we go through this. Canaan, e even though most of us today don't have a literal Jordan or a li literal river Jordan that's in front of us, there still seems to be, if you're like me, there's always that one thing that separates you from reaping all that God has in store for you. Come on, anybody else like that? It's like there's always this one thing in the way. Let, let me help you all in case I'm losing you. I want to lose weight, but I just can't deal with the french fries. <laughs> there's one thing. Come on, y'all. You, you, you get what I'm saying? I want to buy the new home, but if I only had money, just, just one thing, just one thing, come on. You know, I want to have kids, but I just need to have a husband. Just one, just one thing, just one thing. There's always something that separates us from going into our Canaan. And so today's message, this, this Jordan, symbolizes us taking that level, next level faith to know God, and I'm going to use this word over and over, know God experientially so we can get to the place where God would have us to go. So open your Bibles to the book of Joshua chapter 3, and let me read, and then I'm just going to read a little bit at a time. I want to encourage you at your own to read chapter 3 and chapter 4, and then in the upcoming weeks, we're going to continue to walk through this. Look with me at verse 7. Let me read verse 7 for context, and then we're going to walk through it. Say amen if you're there. Okay, watch this. It says, The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that I, as I was with Moses, that's a very, very important statement, so I will be with you. As for you, he says, command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, when you come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan and it says, and Joshua said to the people of Israel, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. Now look at verse 10. Then Joshua said, here is how you shall know that the living God is among you. Here is how you shall know that the living God is among you. And let me just read this. And that he will without fail drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Now repeat out of me. It says, here's how I will know. One more time. It says, here's, say, here's how I will know. Okay, good. So the first thing I want you to hear this morning as we kind of walk through this is that God wants us to know who he is. Okay? God wants me to know who he is. God wants you to know who he is. And it's not that we don't know him. He wants us to know him. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that over and over again. Now, it's very, very important because this word, this word know, it's, it's the Hebrew word yada. And what it means is to learn of, to know about, to experience, to encounter. And let me even go here. It means to have a relationship with. Okay? Very, very important concept. I want you all to get this. Now, let me, let me flesh this out because before we even move into the text, I want to, to get this in your spirit. It's one thing to know about God, and it's another thing to actually know God. Now, don't make the mistake in saying that because I have an experience with him, that now I know him. The problem I've seen in Christendom and in the church is you've got folk walking around as if they know all there is to know about God, and then they look down on folk that don't know what they know about God. Come on, say amen. Yeah, you, you, you bump into people like that? You need to get where I am. And we feel because I do this and because I do that, that I know God, and, and we walk around acting as if we know all there is to know about God. Now hear me. Even though the goal is to know God, don't ever make the mistake of thinking that you will know all there is to know about God. Come on, does that make sense? 
Because here's the thing, this word, this word, this is a very, very interesting word, yada, where it says God wants to know us. Here's, Joshua says, here is how you will know, and he says that the living God is among you. That word know is written in the imperfect tense, and here's what the imperfect tense says. The imperfect tense says that the action of the verb is never complete or is not yet complete at the time of the writing. Okay, so let me explain. Let me explain. So what it means is that I may know God, but my knowledge of God is not complete. Does that make sense? So, so, so knowing God then, it's progressive, and the more I encounter him, the more I learn about him. Okay? Now, I hate to bust your bubble because it doesn't matter how long you've been in church, you might know a few things about him, but it doesn't mean you know all there is to know. I wish I had somebody in here. Come on, because knowledge of God is progressive. This is what the incomplete tense of the verb saying is that you know something now, but there's stuff tomorrow that you have. You, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That you don't know about. Yet it doesn't mean that you don't know him, but it just means that you don't know all there is to know about him. So when I say to you that you may know him, God wants us to know him, here's what that means. He wants us to begin the journey of the relationship to understanding who he is. Let me illustrate. I kind of hinted at this last Sunday. I've been known Pastor Katani for about 37 years now. We've been married for about 35 of those 37 years. And man, every time we have a religious conversation, um, that's like a holy discussion. Yeah, you know, some of y'all call it argument or whatever. Um, I, I, I learn something else about her. Are you with me? And it increases my knowledge of her. Because if I knew all there is to know about her, Unless I'm stupid, we won't find ourselves in these holy conversations. But because I end up doing things that I don't yet know, ah, uh, you kind of get what I'm saying. And, and isn't that what we call sin, guys? When we find ourselves doing things that we are not doing, because, that do because we don't yet know God. And here's the other thing I want you to understand about this. We serve a God that is inhuman. Come on. We serve a God that is spirit. We serve a God that's not flesh and blood. We serve a God that is eminent. He's here with us, but at the same time, he's transcendent. We serve a God that's near, and at the same time, he's far. We serve a God that lives in you, but at the same time, he lives outside of you. I wish I had somebody in here. We serve a God that's in the universe, but at the same time, he still exists outside the universe. Are you with me? We serve a God that fills all there is to fill with space. How in the world can we fool ourselves into thinking that our finite, limited brain can hold all there is to know about God? You can't trap God on the inside of your brain. Our God is too big. Come on, say amen if you're hearing me. It's too big. I mean, God is too big. It, it, here's what I said Wednesday night. If we make the mistake of thinking that we can fit all there is to know about God in our head, our heads will pop open. Come on. It, it ain't big enough to hold all there is to hold about God. Yeah, so here, here's how we know him, right? What we know about him is what we experience of him. So if you, you've been lonely and he provided comfort, you know him as a God who provides comfort. Come on, if you've been motherless and he was there to care for you, you know him as a mother to the motherless. Come on. If you've been without a dad, you know him as a father to the fatherless. Come on. If you've been broke, you know him to be bread to the hungry and water to the thirsty. You know him as a way maker. You know him as a provider. You know him as this and you know him as that. But that's there is to know about him. And the reason I want you to lock into this where I said God wants you to know him because he wants you to know more about him than you and I know about the little experience that we had with him. He's bigger than the little thing that he did for us. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's bigger than that. One more time, say, neighbor, God's bigger than that. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, my marriage was in trouble for many, many, many years. And because God fixed my marriage and restored it and gave us a ministry called Restoration Christian Fellowship, doesn't mean he's restricted solely to restoring. <laughs> he's bigger than that, right? Come on, y'all. Does this make sense? So I know his restoring ability, but that's not all there is to know about him. And here's the mistake we make. We stop at the experience, but there's more. There's more, okay? Repeat out of me. Say, self, God wants me to know him. And also say this. Say, self, my knowledge of God is progressive. Are you with me? You get what I'm saying? So here's how this works. The more I know about him, the closer to him I get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's where you won't like me today. Number two, to know him, we must obey him. Oh, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to know him, we must obey him. Okay, let me, let me, uh, and we're not going to make it far, so it's okay. If we stop here, we stop here. Now, look at, look at verse 3, uh, verse 8 of Joshua chapter 3. Look at verse 8 of Joshua chapter 3. Say amen, were you there? It says, as for you, Joshua, God is speaking to Joshua, command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, when you come to the banks of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Jump down to verse 13. Jump down to verse 13. And look at what verse 13 says. And when the soles of the feet of the priests Bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing, and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. Okay. This sounds good. It reads well. It's very challenging for the Israelites to get to Canaan. Understand with me, and I can tell you right now, we're not going to make it far, but it's all good. On the other side of the Jordan was their place of promise. For 40 years, these Israelites were wandering in the wilderness, waiting to get to the Canaan. Then all of a sudden, they get to the Canaan, and the one thing standing between them is the Jordan River. Now, God says, to get in, I need you to, to get over, I need you to step in. I like that little statement. To get over, you got to step in. I like that. That'll work, yeah. To get over, you got to step in. Now, here's the problem with getting over and stepping in. If you look around verse 15, verse 15 says that the Jordan was at flood state during that season, okay? Now, here's a problem with that statement, Normally, if it's not harvest or it's not the month of March to April for the Israelites in that season, and they had made it to the Jordan at the right time, the waters were low. The low waters weren't running because the snow melt wasn't coming down in the valley creating this crazy situation. So here's what the author is trying to get. The problem with the situation, it wasn't so much going into the Jordan and crossing, is what the Jordan was doing. Yeah, the water was running. I mean, when it says the Jordan was at flood state, if you do any historical cultural work on the Jordan, there were parts of the Jordan where the banks was really high. It was a steep drop, and there was some wide parts of it. And when it says the snow melt was coming, here's what I want you all to lock into. is water, what you, we, we know white river raft, what's it, white river rafting? Water rushing like it's nobody's business. And the amount of people that had to cross the Jordan, here's the danger is, is that if you step into that thing while it was rushing, the likelihood of it carrying you away was very, very high. So, so here's, here, here's what that meant. It meant for them to go into the Jordan, it requires great faith. Here's the illustration I gave you. Uh, I gave the church Wednesday night, and I'm gonna use it again. It's like rush hour traffic in LA. Yeah, Denver's rush hour traffic don't mean nothing. Yeah, 
and, and there's a flow going on. And, and your destiny's on the other side. And God says this, to get to your destiny, just walk into traffic. And when you step out, here's what he says, I'll stop it. Now, here's me and here's you. Can't you stop the traffic first? Can we be honest this morning? Can we be honest this morning? Here's me and here's you. Hey, God, can you stop the traffic first? Because I, I'm led to believe, I'm led to believe, I'm led to believe, I'm led to believe that some of those Israelites, when Joshua came to them and said, hey, y'all, here's how we're going to get to, the Can to Canaan. God said we need to step into the Jordan. And, and, and here's a congregation, just like some of y'all are saying, hey, Josh, you sure you heard from God, man? You sure? Because, dude, I ain't about to step into nothing. I'm not about to go into nothing. Yeah? And, and so look at what it results in. It results in disobedience. I wish I had somebody in here because the Lord had spoken. And here's what I said. To know him, it requires obedience right? You got to obey him to know him. And here's the other part. Hey, some of them, some of them, some of them, some of them, some, oh, this is going to be good. Some of them had heard about how he parted the Red Sea. Yeah. And so lock into this. Hey, Joshua, can't you use Aaron's staff, I mean, Moses's staff, the staff that Moses had, and just raise that sucker up, and the Jordan's going to do its thing? And here's Joshua. That was Moses' experience, not yours. I wish I had somebody. And here's God, because this is very, very important, very, very important, very important. Because a lot of us want God to do things for us that God has no business doing for as long as we've been serving him. Let me flesh that out. The reason God had Moses raise his staff so the Red Sea can be parted is because those people had no experience with God. They had no knowledge of God. Come on. They've been in Egypt for 400 plus years. God's been silent. God hadn't done nothing miraculous. God hadn't healed nobody. God hadn't fed nobody. Come on. God hadn't woke nobody up in the morning. God had not done anything miraculous. For, so for them to exemplify that kind of faith, it was crazy. So here's what God did. Because of their immaturity, he had to carry them across. Now, some of us have been walking for a long time, and your Canaan is on the other side. And God is saying, if you want to get over, yeah, you got to step in it. You got to step in it, right? You got to get step in it. And a lot of us are, are negotiating. Hey, God, I'm going to help you with this. Go ahead and part it, then I'll step. He's saying this. If I need to do that, you don't know me. Why? Understand with me. For 40 years, he provided food in the form of manna. He provided water with the striking of the rock. He provided flashlights at night with the fire. Come on. <laughs> he provided shades with the cloud. Y'all with me? He provided medicinal healing with the serpents. Come on. He, he delivered them from the Amorites. He'd done a lot of things for them that they should have known of his ability at that particular point in time. Okay? In this season, yesterday's anointing should position us to walk into tomorrow's blessing. But you can't depend on yesterday's anointing. You need to know God completely differently. To, ah, Jesus today to receive all that God has in store. So here's what it's going to look like. God's going to say, listen, to get to the other side, you need to just step in. And the moment you step in, I'm going to intervene, okay? Now, the reason I need to press this issue, because let me help you out with a little application. A lot of us are praying for God to do things for us that God is saying, you take the first step, and I'm going to show you that I've got your back. Because you need to know me differently. Come on. You, you take the initiative and watch what I'm going to do because you need to know me differently. 
And so here's what we do. Here's what we're doing. Lord, I need you to fix my husband because he's acting stupid. And God is saying, hey, take the first step. And you're like, no, 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 God, just go ahead and fix him so it'll be right. And he said, no, you take the first step. What do you mean take the first step? Shut up so he can see me and you. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. And watch what I'm going to do through you to get to him. Hey, Lord, you need to give me a job so I can pay my bills. Just give me some money. Give me some money, God. Send some money in the mail so I can pay. Go get a job, he's saying. Lord, do, Lord, do, Lord, do, Lord, do. Nothing wrong with praying. Now, if you're a baby, he'll carry you. But if you've been walking with him for a while, he wants to grow you. So here's the lesson. He wants to work through you so when people see you, they don't see you. They see God working through you. Is this making sense? Take the step. Take the step. Take the step. Because it's in the taking of the step that we get to know God. So here's what this means. Obedience is very, very critical. Some things we must stop if we want to know God differently. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I wasn't expecting this. Because <laughs> I like what I'm doing. I like where I'm at. But you can't stay where you're at and grow with God. I must obey. The Jordan is running. The blessing is on the other side, and he's saying, take the first step. And, and here's what you need to know about him taking the first step. I'm going to say this one thing, and I'll stop. He opens the path the moment we obey him. You can't disobey God and say, we know him. They don't go together. We cannot disobey God and say, we know him. We cannot disobey God and say we know him. Let me, let me give you this. Let me give you this too. And then and, um, we'll, we'll, let me just press it. We'll come back. So when we obey, he accomplishes his work. What? When we obey, he accomplishes his work. What? Very, 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 very important. Let's read, let's read verses 10 through 17. Then I'll show you a couple of things real quick. Okay, watch this. It says here, um, verses 10, then on verse, chapter 3, verse 10. And Joshua said, here is how you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. And verse 11 says, behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is passing over before you into the Jordan. Now, therefore, he says, take 12 men from the tribes of Israel. We'll come back and talk about that. You don't want to miss this. Eat from each tribe a man. And when the soles of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing, and the waters coming down from above shall do what? Stand in one heap, okay? And man, you need to read the rest of that real quick. So two things that's being pointed out in that text uh, I want y'all to see, and then we're going to uh, deal with this. Come on. If y'all go to the next slide. Okay, there it is. Number one, okay? God wants to work through you. I, I don't like the word enemies even though I wrote it. Let me change that word real quick on the fly. To deal with oppositions or hindrances to vision. I prefer that word, okay? Very, very important. Very, very important. God wants to work through us to deal with opposition or hindrances to the vision. Here's what he says. Here is how you will know, Yada, that the living God is among you. Now let me tell you why I like that phrase so much. Grandma Dan wrote a song that says, God not dead, he's still alive, right? And they went to, I could feel in my hands, feel in my feet, all that good stuff. Here's the benefit and the value of what you and I have as believers in Christ. We serve a living God. Oh, come on, y'all. As opposed to the gods that any opposition 
to destiny can ever present against us. Here's what he said to the Israelites. If you, uh, here's how you're going to know that I'm God. When you take the first step, right, and, and you start to cross over into your destiny, okay, in your place of destiny, there's going to be some things and some people that are against everything that I have in store for you, okay? Listen to this. Listen to this. You ain't got to worry about dealing with them because they serve a dead God. I wish I had somebody in here. But I am a living God, so any opposition that stands in the way, I, your God, I'm going to deal with it. Listen to what he says. The, the what? The Amorites, the Canaanites, the, the Hivites, the, the, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Girgashites, the Perizzites, all of them, those people groups that have been opposition to the people of God every step of the way, he says he's going to deal with the enemies. Now, church, isn't that good news? Let, let, oh, isn't that good news? We spend more time being upset with stuff we have no business being upset about, upset about when God's got it. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. Y'all want to hear this. Anything that stands in the way, anything that opposes, anything that blocks, any opposition, they have no power, no strength, no nothing when it comes to standing up against the living God that we serve. Come on, does anybody know that this morning? No enemy, no matter how big, come on. No mountain, regardless of how high. No valley, regardless of how low, come on. No, it doesn't matter what people can conjure up. If God has it for you and we take the first step, he's going to deal. Here's how he says it. If I hold my peace and allow the Lord to fight my battle, victory is going to be mine. Here's what it does for me. My attitude is this. I don't care what you say, who opposes, if God sent me, I'm going regardless of what's in the way. Here's my prayer. Here's how we pray. Lord, I want to go over there, but can you move that? And here's what God says. Just walk toward it. Just walk toward it. And in you going toward it, I got it. Oh. I'm not sending you toward it to fight it. Just walk toward it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just, just approach the thing. Just, just, just approach it. Just, just approach it. And here's why some of us can't get breakthrough. We come to the Jordans of our life and we look to see who's on the other side. And we try to find alternate routes. Oh, don't act like you don't do that. We're all guilty, myself inclusive. And God is saying, just walk toward it. Just walk toward it and watch what I'm going to do. There's many applications. Let me give you a simple one that will help you in your homes, right? Let's say, let's say the wife is acting crazy. Don't avoid her. Just walk. Yeah, yeah, you get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Couples are looking at each other like, mm. No, no y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Let me clean it up a little bit because some of y'all is mine all over the place. If my wife and I just ended up in an argument and I know God, the Bible says don't let the sun. Yeah, you get it now. Baby, I know we fighting. I just walk toward it, and I just give a hug. And it's not my job to say, you need to stop. You just need to forgive our brother. <laughs> listen to this. Listen to this. God said, I will deal with the opposition, not you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me help you all. I am where I am today because this woman developed a relationship with God before I did, and she walked toward me. You kind of get what I'm saying? I wasn't right. I wasn't acting right. I wasn't behaving right. Matter of fact, I was upset with her because here, oh, now you think you're holy. Now you think you're all that. 
because she just kept coming. She just kept walking toward. You kind of get what I'm saying? And look at what God did. He dealt with the opposition. You get it now? You get it now? You get it now? Here's how scripture says it. I will make your enemies your what? Y'all know it. You know the scripture. You know the scripture. And I'm just giving you one application. There's many, many applications. There's many, many applications. I'll never remember, forget when I was, I think it was 25 years old, young engineer looking for a job. I'm just about to get out the military. And I said, you know what? I want to work for, work for IBM. And I think the Lord had dropped it in my spirit. I did the crazy thing, moved up to a house so close to the company. People saying, what are you doing? I'm going to get a job there. I was walking toward it. Yeah, y'all don't get it, y'all don't get it, y'all don't get it, y'all don't get it, y'all get it, y'all get it, y'all get it, y'all get it. Those of us that have been with Restoration for a long time, it's Vision Sunday, right? We were over at Norfolk in a place, 555 Norfolk. Y'all remember this? We were in there. We spent gobs and gobs of money to build out that place. Church as well. The place was packed, all that stuff, but it was restricted. Come on, y'all know this, y'all know this. And God said, leave. And someone, why we got to leave? We just spent all that money up in here, up in here. And God said, just walk toward it and look at what he did. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. Just walk toward it, walk toward it. He gave us the land. He gave us building. God has a purpose, and a lot of us are missing our destiny because we're afraid to step in the Jordan. And so guess what he can't do? Deal with opposition because we're not exercising faith. Right? Let me give you this one, then I'm going to stop because there's more to talk about. We're going to pick this up next week. Look at the second B. Not only does he walk through to reveal he works through us, secondly, to reveal he is a what? Miracle what? Working what? This is going to really mess you up, but I'm going to say it, then we're going to stop. Joshua, step in, and then when you step in, I'm going to stop the rivers from flowing, and the verse that says, as far away as a city called Adam. Read chapter 3. Okay? And, and not only am I going to stop it from flowing, anything that feeds it, I'm going to cut it off too. And I'm going to pile it a mile high. It's just going to be a heap. And you're going to walk across on dry ground. Sometimes he wants us to step in. This is good. So he can... Work through us to reveal that he's a miracle working God. I'm going to say this, I'm going to leave you alone because it's going to really mess you up. Remember with me, the reason he's doing this is because you did not just get out of Egypt. Folk that just got out of Egypt, he carries them because they don't have enough Folk that's been walking with him for a long time ought to know him, and he wants to know them more. Right? So just step. Just step, take the first step, and he does what he wants done. Okay? Let me use me as an example, because uh, I think this is very, very appropriate. Um, diagnosed with cancer. Y'all heard this story many, many times, many, many times, many, many times. <sighs> And so, a lot of people were saying to me, believe God. It's going to mess you up. So I believe him. Believe God for a healing. I believe him. I do. Believe. I believe him. But then God said to me, step in. Here's what step in meant for me. Go to the doctor, and I got it. Because when I stepped in, he stopped the flow from way up here and stopped the flow. Anything that was coming in. Y'all not hear me. Y'all not hear me. Y'all not Here's what it looks like. After two years, right, of fighting with this stuff, Dr. Paul Lin was my main, um, the guy who cut me up. The surgeon. Yeah. Thank you. Surgeon. Thank you. I go into Dr. Lin's office. And it's my day of release. Dr. Lynn says to me, Mr. Gilbert, I have no scientific or surgical reasons to explain why you're alive. 
He said, there's nothing we did that can explain you being alive today. That's what he said. They cut me up pretty good. Matter of fact, they cut me up so good that one time I'm laying on the table. This is after surgery, probably six, seven, eight on the table. He comes out and he says to my wife, go call his family. He's not going to be here tomorrow morning. So in obedience, my wife says, I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do, doc. Um, you got skill. I got faith because God said step in. And I think God, my faith and God's ability is going to use your skill to do something. That's just one illustration, right? We step in, and then God revealed his miracle working power through. It's not about Felix, not about Felix's ability. It's about how God, hear this out, wants to use you as a vessel to proclaim his works. Lead surgeon in the hospital. Katani and I walks into his office and he starts crying like a baby. Just crying. Stack of papers. There's nothing in here that says you should be alive. Nothing. Nothing in here that says that we remove this or we remove that and you should be alive. When we got done cutting, there was still stuff that says you're done. So here's what he says. There must be a God that exists beyond my medical training. That's what he said. That's what he said. To reveal what? He's a miracle. Most doctors, because of their ability, don't believe in the miracle work and ability of God. Now, I know I'm going a little long, but I'm going to stop here. He wants me to know him. He wants me to obey him. And in my obedience of him, he works through me to reveal. You kind of get where I'm going? We're going to pick this up next week. We're going to pick this up next week. So here's what this looks like. Here's my experience of God. Here's how I said it last week. I'll say it again today. There's nothing you could ever do on the face of the earth to convince me that God can't heal. Because of my experience. Now, let me be clear. Does that mean I know him? It means I know he can heal. Is there more to know of him? Yeah, you get it. Because no is in the imperfect tense. I just learned one thing. Now, here's what the healing ability of God should press me to do. Next time he says, step into Jordan, guess what I'm going to do? Yeah, yeah. You get it, 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 you get it. You get it. Because it's given me strength to know what his ability is. So, 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 so let, me, let me stop here. Y'all are going to really get mad right now. You're going to really get mad. Let me stop here. So when he comes to me and he says, bring all the tithe in the storehouse. Prove me. Because I know him, guess what I do? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bow your heads with me. Just stay where you are. Just bow your heads. Come on, Pastor Kay. Let me just have just Dominique. Worship team, y'all stay put. Stay put. Yeah, let me just get Dominique. Yeah. I want us to marinate on this for a little while. Good, yeah. Lord, you were good. Yeah. Church, God wants you to know him. God wants me to know him. God wants us to know him. And this is serious business because the world is dying and going to hell and they don't know God. And he wants us to know him like that. So wherever you are, just take a moment to bow your head. We're going to pick this up next week. Flesh it out some more. Ask God to reveal himself to you. That's what you want. God, show me you. Show me you, God. Show me the Jordans of my life that I need to step in. Show me the places where I've missed you. Show me the places where I've failed you. And then God, give me the strength to trust you to go in like that.